Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third week in Epiphany. This is a season when we celebrate how God is revealed to us in Christ. Bear with me while I adjust my ear. I need smaller ears or a bigger microphone clip. Uh, a couple of things to know about coming up this week. Uh, first of all, every Sunday starting at 8.45, uh, Pastor Joe was leading uh, a Zoom conversation on By Every Measure. It's a podcast. So if you're uh, joining us at 8 o'clock, there's still time to get in this week. Otherwise, next week at uh, 8.45, there's information about this in the bulletin link that was sent to you yesterday uh, or that appears on the uh, 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 comment section on Facebook. Uh, in addition, we have a brand new secure drop box for offerings and other uh, donations you wish to bring into church. It is located inside the east entranceway where we're able to drop off items for food pantries and other ministries we support. Uh, and it's cleverly, cleverly labeled drop box. Uh, it's secure, uh, it's locked on the inside, so your offerings that are dropped off there are secure. Uh, so knowing that, let us begin worship with our first hymn. God of us all, breathe your spirit into us that we may be filled with new life. Remove the shadow of darkness from our hearts. Renew our souls and fill us with your light. You come to all who call upon you. You never leave us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sins, confident in God's mercy. Merciful God, we confess to you and each other our sinfulness in all the ways it shows in our lives. We are selfish. We ignore the needs of others. We do not forgive and love others the way you have done for us. But grant us the grace to live new. And when we fail, forgive us. Renew us and set us free. Our God is the God of love and forgiveness. In the mercy of God, our Maker, your sins are forgiven, and you are redeemed from your sinfulness in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right to give God thanks and praise. We join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you recall, 
This is the time we usually gather around the altar to celebrate Holy Communion, receiving the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, along with it, a promise of freedom and forgiveness for us. God's word promises us that God is with us all of our lives. And though we might feel the loss of being able to gather together to share communion with one another, Christ still binds us together. And while we wait again to receive Jesus' body and blood, we receive God's grace in Christ every day. This is a promise God makes to us in the waters of baptism that join us to Jesus' death and resurrection. So at this time, I invite you to take some water and make the sign of a cross. And may you recall again God's promise to seal you with the Holy Spirit. And may you receive anew the mercies of God's grace which sustain us in this life, in our new life in Christ. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it to the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Here ends the reading. Our gospel today is the gospel according to St. Mark in the first chapter. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. And passing along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. We get to hear a children's sermon. Hey, good morning, friends. Happy Sunday. Today's gospel lesson comes to us from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. In today's story, we hear about Jesus calling some more disciples. Last week, we heard about the calling of Philip and Nathaniel. Today, it is Peter and John. Peter and John are fishermen. They're out in their boat on the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus is walking along the shore. And he hollers out to them and says, hey, come and follow me. Today you are catching fish, but if you follow me, I will make you fishers of people. Now, I don't know about you, but if some dude called out and asked me to stop what I'm doing and come follow him, 
because he's going to make me fishers of people, I'd say, what? But Peter and John don't do that. They drop their nets, they bring their boat to shore, shore and they become two more of the 12 disciples and follow Jesus. And if you remember, we are gonna hear a lot more about our friend Peter as we get closer and closer to Easter. So he is um, one of the disciples that we hear talked about most often in the Gospels. So friends, if you hear Jesus calling you, if you hear Jesus calling and say, hey, go to your neighbor's house and shovel the snow for free, do it. That's God calling you, putting something on your heart. If you feel this desire, I don't know if it happens with my kids, but just in case it would happen to you that you would want to clean your room and pick up because you hear Jesus calling you to do something nice for your mom, do it. Don't hesitate. Be kind. If you get that tug to talk to a stranger or to somebody at school that you don't know, that is Jesus calling you. Jesus calling you to be kind to somebody else. Friends, be fishers of people. Spread God's love everywhere you go. Drip those baptismal promises all over your neighborhood. And you too can be fishers of people. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the gift of Jesus. We give you thanks that you call us to serve others while serving you. Help us to act in kindness. Help us to give of ourselves freely. Help us to be fishers of people. And all of God's people said, amen. See you next week, my friends. Good morning, everyone. The story that Kim just told us was about people doing really bold things. Don't you think that if Jesus came up to you and asked you to follow, it would take some bold thoughts to make sure that you're set and ready to go with him? I sure think so. And that's why today we're going to sing the song, Be Bold. So I know this is the third time that we've sang this song, so I'm not going to go through and teach you, but I will have the words, as always, playing on the bottom so you know exactly what to do at what parts in the song. So here we go. Let's sing Be Bold. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord our God is with thee. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord our God is with thee. Be not afraid. Na 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 na. Be Sing it loud and proud. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord our God is with me. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord our God is with me. Be not afraid. Na 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 na. Be not dismayed. Na 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 na. Walk in faith. today guys and remember to be bold and trust in Jesus. Have a good Sunday everyone. I want to say today's gospel reading in Mark the first chapter is one of my absolute favorites because it defines the core of my own beliefs, my personal theology. Jesus very first words are here. His first words immediately following his baptism he comes out, he's still wet, and he says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Believe the good news. Now we hear these words in the middle of a season that we call epiphany, a word that means manifest or appearing or basically seen. So the focus of the season 
is to look for how God is seen in Jesus and, by extension, how Jesus is seen in us in this world. Now, in the church, we also follow a lectionary, which is the appointed scripture readings for every Sunday. And that lectionary repeats every three years. So the danger of that for me is to repeat myself, especially after all these years. So if you've heard this concept before, that's why. Now, one of, the, one of those points is the context these words came in. The big deal here is when Jesus was baptized, we're told the heavens were opened. Now, the significance of that phrase is that back then, people believed there was something like a huge dome over the world, kind of like a big plexiglass cheese dome. And God lived above it, and we lived down here. And there was this hard separation between God and us. So when we're told today, when Jesus was baptized, the heavens were opened, wow! There's nothing between us. That hard, hard separation between God and us is not there anymore. There's no distance between us anymore. It means that God is loose. Nothing gets away, gets in the way between us. Now, in our world, we might feel, not feel like that phrase is a big deal, but back then, it really was. And then, right after that, Jesus' very first words, the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, the thing that people were aching and hoping for was really, really close. It was right around the corner. And Jesus said, friends, it is this close. So come with me. Step in. You can see it and feel it and touch it. Now, those who want to try to tame Jesus and limit his path regard the kingdom of God simply as heaven when we die. Now, that's the end point. But that is nowhere near all of what the kingdom of God is. You know, in his time, some of Jesus' contemporaries assumed that the kingdom of God meant the nation of Israel. And when Jesus would not give them the nation of Israel back, when he wouldn't do for them what they wanted, they turned on him and killed him. And they shouted, next! Who is next to lead us? Here's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is heaven on earth with us now, living in God's promise of new life and freedom, a promise of forgiveness and freedom, a promise of love stronger than we are. And we don't need to go looking for it. The kingdom of God comes looking for us. Do you see that direction? God comes seeking us. And remember, God's loose now. There's no separation between God and us. God is looking for us, seeking the lost, bringing us home, loving us back to life. Now, the kingdom of God Jesus talks about, it's not a place. It is God's power, making the world new right here with us. And Jesus calls us to be partners in doing this. So as I like to say, Either the kingdom of God has come, or it hasn't. And if it hasn't, then we can go home, watch TV, clean the basement, do whatever we do. Just go back to normal. But if the kingdom of God has come, there is some urgency about this. Jesus shows us and tells us the values of the kingdom of God are compassion bringing peace, serving others, generosity, loving others as ourselves. It's interesting that these are the very things that we tried to teach our kids when they were little, but once we grow up and enter that place we call the real world, <laughs> it's easy to forget, isn't it? The living in the kingdom of God means serving others generously right now. Not just talking about it or making plans to do it sometime in the future, but making sure that hungry people, especially children, get enough 
to eat. Well, there's a short-term and a long-term thing here. It means food now, but it also means setting up structures that will do that work into the future. That's why we partner with Bread of Healing across, yeah? And in Hephatha. It's why our churches in Sussex created Sussex Outreach Services. It's why we share meals at Serenity Inn and the guy is a guest house. Now, the urgency about this is for the hungry, they are hungry right now. Now, think about this. You and I, we might be the only Jesus that other people see. We might be the only opportunity they have to encounter the kingdom of God coming into this world. So if we don't do it, who will? So living in the kingdom of God brings both urgency and great responsibility. It's not just words and beliefs. It's very much what we say and what we do because our words and our actions matter. And Jesus does not work alone. He calls people to follow, and then he sends us out to continue his work of bringing heaven on earth, the kingdom of God, into this world today. And this is a time right now in this nation where making peace is deeply needed. As we know all too well, we have been visited by deep division and animosity like I've never seen in my lifetime. It's an era when reason, facts, and truth are replaced with lies, conspiracy theories, and venom to the point where it can sometimes feel like there's no common ground to even have a conversation. There's an editorial I read this week that asks, how do you find healing in unity with those who have demonstrated their contempt for the equal humanity of others? So yeah, that makes living out the ways of the kingdom of God even harder. But that doesn't mean we quit. Oh, no. It means we bring in the kingdom of God by loving people one at a time. It leads us to love those who we disagree with, to be understanding and even generous. Now, that does not mean we need to agree with them or help avoid the consequences of their actions but we need to love them. That is how peace is made. In the face of this vast national angst we're experiencing this month, I'm reminded of words from Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural address. In his conclusion, looking toward the end of the Civil War, before his assassination, Lincoln said, with malice toward none, and charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us the right, I'm sorry, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to heal and bind up this nation's wounds. That's an image of what it means to bring peace. And this is one of the times where our dual citizenship really shows. See, we have dual citizenship, yeah? We are citizens of the kingdom of God that Jesus invites us into, and we are citizens of the United States of America, the United States of America. In the midst of the tension and animosity going on today, rehashing and debating the specific instances and the particular events of the recent violence does not help bring about healing. That's a matter for Congress and the courts to figure out. For you and me, bringing peace is a much more personal thing. Waging peace begins at home. What we say, what we repeat, how we treat others, whether on our side or the other side, all of that matters. And this is not a partisan thing. It has no sides other than bringing peace, setting the stage for unity. Again, in Lincoln's words, malice toward none, 
and charity for all to bind up our nation's wounds. We have a hunch that left to itself, the secular world may not go in that direction. It might be more tempted to keep division alive without realizing that on that track, nobody wins, everybody loses. Instead, this is a time that we get to show what it means that the kingdom of God has come and that God is active and loose on this earth. Jesus invites us to step into the kingdom of God now, a new era, a new time, a living faith that isn't just a religion or words, but it's about how we choose to live, what we believe along with what we do, how we relate with and to others, whether we share what we have, whether we show mercy, and whether we dare to wage peace. And in this journey, it is not up to us to be right or to have the right answers or to believe all the right things and then stop there. No, no. Instead of being right, what matters is being righteous, to live for what is right, the values of the kingdom of God, compassion, bringing peace, serving others, generosity, loving others as ourselves. And remember, you might be the only Jesus that other people see. The heavens are open. God's loose. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Will you step in? May you see and feel the joy, the relief, the peace of heaven on earth. And may you be the ones to bring peace and the invitation to heaven on earth in this world. Thanks be to God. We join together confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is a time when we typically receive our offerings in worship, so I'll remind you that you may use the donate button, as many of you do. You can enroll in direct deposit. Uh, just email Sandy in our office. Um, or you can continue to bring offerings in in person, either by mail, or you can now use the new convenient offering drop box.
Oh God, all we have first comes from you. We give to you with grateful hearts. Use these gifts in all that we are to proclaim your love for all people. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for opening and bringing the kingdom of God to us. Grant us the courage to step into it with you and to feel and experience heaven on earth right now. And help us to know the urgency of carrying your new era into the world with your good news in acts of love, and reconciliation, mercy, generosity, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of healing and hope, we give you thanks for the hope that comes with vaccines for COVID, a pandemic that has led us to give up so many things that we form our lives around. As we wait for widespread immunity, grant us patience, wisdom, and courage. And even in the midst of hope of resolution, we are pained by over 4,000 deaths from COVID across this nation and so many more around the world. Bring comfort to those who have lost loved ones. Bring solace to those who are infected and wait for recovery. And even as we wait for vaccines, strengthen our patience and grant us wisdom to do all we can to keep our neighbors safe and alive. Fill us with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of all nations, we pray this day for our nation as a new administration begins. We ask, Lord, that you grant all leaders in this nation wisdom and the willingness to hold out for truth. And for all those who've gotten caught up in the division and rancor, lead them to reconciliation. And use us as your angels, your messengers, Lead us to be increasingly aware of how what we say and what we do matters even more. So speak through us, Lord, your messages of peace, reconciliation, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of all good things, in a time when it is easier to look at what we have lost, grant us eyes to see what we have and what we can be grateful for. We thank you for the new rhythms we have created, for this community of faith that reaches out online, for homes and cars, for work and play, for those who plow roads and keep us safe. We thank you for the squealing delight of children playing in the snow, the gradually lengthening days, for your promise of new life, and all the good things you give to us we thank you now with grateful hearts. Receive our thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we commend to you those who have been infected with COVID. We lift up to you those who wait on you as they live with illness or await recovery. We remember today by Medhurst and Sue Jarman Jim Madursky, and Jane Stadler from the Cooperating Church of the Sussex Board who has entered, entered hospice care, and all those who we name to you now. Stay with them, Lord. Be as close as the br breeze on their faces. Hear their prayers. Bring them all they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.